Hey everyone, it's Dave from Curtis Crafts, and today I'm doing something a little bit different and wrapping up three separate projects. One of them is going to be making a stand for these binoculars, which actually came from the set of Future Man. I didn't make these. But I did want to make a nice display for these that matched the prop itself and would allow me to put this in my display case without messing up any of the greeblies on the bottom of this. And like I mentioned, these are from the show itself and they were only used in a couple of scenes. But it's still cool to see how that particular department weathered all their props and everything. This is actually made out of a set of kids binoculars that I think came from the Discovery Store. So that's kind of interesting. They didn't take any of the labeling off or anything. The next one is the Psycho Blaster, which Wolf had in the show. And I've made a video on this before, but I modified it quite a bit. And the last project I'm going through, which is mostly complete, is the TTD, which was their time travel device that ran off of Cameronium. Also, I just hit 500 subscribers, and that's awesome. And if you'd like to support this channel and help me out so that I can keep making these, I do actually have merchandise for sale. I am planning to do a giveaway at 750 or even 1,000 subscribers, depending on how fast I get there before I can prepare it. And I do sell the things I make as well as take commissions if you're interested. So let's get started. Now the first thing I'm working on, like I mentioned before, is a stand for these binoculars that I actually won at auction from the set of the show. And there's a lot of wiring and different circuit boards hanging off of this, and it's actually kind of fragile, so I didn't want to just set it down on a piece of glass, or even on the shelf that's on my display case. So I opted for making something that looked kind of like the prop itself, but would hold it up on the sides and keep the middle from touching. And this one I'm going really simple by just using some styrene, some pieces of a flashlight from the Dollar Tree, and some wiring hooked up to a broken Arduino Mini. Also, I'd like to talk about the fact that I finally hit 500 subscribers on YouTube, which I thought was pretty good considering I still work a full-time job on top of doing this. Really, I do a lot of this for fun and because I want to get into the movie industry eventually and make props. Also, I have a lot of really terrible jokes that occupy my mind, and this is a really good release for those. And I'd like to think they're a little bit above dad joke level humor. I've already filmed a few videos that I just need to edit, and I'm getting better and better at editing things, bringing my time down to about one hour for every one minute of video, which is terrible, but for me it's great. For instance, I've been working on this project for a little while, which I can give you this little bit of, and that's it. That's all you get right now. So be sure to look for that one as soon as I can finish filming and editing it. Like I mentioned before, there's a couple ways you could help support the channel. The easiest, of course, is to subscribe to the channel or just like and comment on this video. I really like when people have open discussions about all of this stuff, and I especially like blind hatred. Those are always fun to read. Another way you can support the channel is I have a Tee Public storefront, and I'll put the link of that in the description below. And it's also the easiest way to get Conrad 9000 merch. I also have an Etsy store, which I'll link below, where I'll be uploading various 3D models and designs. Right now, the only one I deemed perfect enough that you could print out and assemble and have no issues with is the excessively loading revolver that you can use as a visual gag for your next ridiculous movie. And I even have a video showing how to put it together that you can find at the top of this video or down in the description below. For the Psycho Blaster prop I've been working on, I want it to be more like the hero prop in the show, and because of that I've been replacing more and more parts on it as I find out what the real one was made out of. For instance, I actually got in contact with the person who made the original prop, and from what they could remember they said that the top laser sight was actually made from a paintball barrel. So I scoured eBay till I found one that looked kind of similar but it had way too many holes, so I assume it might be this one and they just cut it down and drilled the holes out larger, which turned out to look pretty close to what it was. I don't think this one's exact, but I think it's good enough for now, so I'm not hard mounting it or gluing it in. I drew up some parts to be 3D printed to help hold this onto the top rail of the gun, 
And the rear piece, the prop maker stated that they machined out of some Delrin or some plastic, so I'll have to do that too in the future to make something a little more exact. But for now, I make a placeholder. One of the things they also stated was they never expected anyone to try and recreate this piece, which is exactly why I wanted to make it. And the other change I needed to make was in my original video, if you watch, I made a resin casting of the back half of a bullet, which goes inside the gun and covers up the battery and everything for the inside. But in the original prop, they used a self-contained airsoft grenade with all of the lights and batteries inside of it because it was meant to be ejected as a single cartridge. But this wasn't actually done for camera and it was really unsafe to eject this heavy cartridge. Once I had wired all my LEDs and included a rechargeable 3 volt lithium battery into the cartridge, I was able to reassemble the top. Which I did so by using some epoxy to hold the halves together and then use some hot glue around the outside to make a diffusing ring around the bullet. After that I paint the handle a lighter brown because the one I picked out before didn't really match up with the screen use prop. The worst thing is there's about three or four of these that show up in the show and they're all just a little bit different so I'm just kind of picking out parts I like off of each of them. And the next thing I'll need to find in a future video is some kind of 7 inch saw blade with a lot of teeth on it to use for the top of this to get rid of the placeholder I have now. And finally this brings me to the TTD, and I was interested in this one because when there was an auction for a lot of the Future Man props, I kind of really wanted this one, but it was a stunt version with nothing on the inside, and the price was going up rather high. So I let it go and decided to make my own. And this turns out to just be a 10 inch iPad case made by Pelican, and I figured that out by going off of the dimensions for the actual prop auction. I used some styrene to make all the details on the top and later I'll have to add in some fake allen screws. And the sort of disappointing thing about the real prop is the interior of this seems to be about 2 inches deep whenever it's opened. So there's probably one that's used in an opening fashion and then this one for when it's closed. And in the show there's typically a camera cut to divide the sections of when this is open and closed. So I think I'm maybe right in thinking the open one is a totally different prop. And that this one doesn't have anything inside. But I am starting to create a general layout of how it would look inside. I think the top part of it is a cell phone with a custom bezel around it to cover that up and they just played a video of a bar graph that looked all sci-fi whenever the TTD was on. And that's just my thought. The bottom half had a sectional grid that went around a circle with 10 individual spaces. And inside of that was a few buttons that had some random symbols on them. I cut a majority of the design out of styrene and then designed the grates that go over each of the openings on Tinkercad, 3D printed them, and then cast all the copies out of resin. And in the future I'll need to design a way to put all the electronics in this and everything else that needs to fit. I know this is a departure from my normal video style, and I just wanted to give an update on everything that's going on with the channel. And I'd also like to give a shout out and a huge thanks to Justin over at JPEG Design, who redid all my logos in exchange for a really interesting and fun commission. And there'll be more on that in a future video. And also, check his brother Chuck's channel out at The Flying Valiant if you're interested in seeing some really cool miniature and diecast conversions. But till then, stay crafty.